everybody and welcome to Skate Gear. Today is Wheel Theory 101. Many of you who are familiar with the ABEC 11 line know that there are many wheels, many different ways to get the job done and there's just not enough time to go over every single wheel design that we make. So what I've done is I've made a 2x2 two two matrix. We're going to be adding wheels to the board, talking as little about the actual wheels themselves but where they go on the board. What I've put over here are the shapes of the wheels. And basically there's only two categories of shapes that I want to talk about. Shapes that are designed for drift and shapes that are designed for grip. Down here for the columns we are going to have urethanes, namely urethanes that are designed specifically for sliding, for drifting, for smooth transitions. And we're going to have urethanes that were designed for grip for traction. Uh, those of you who are familiar with ABEC 11 know that the drift formula that is known in soft wheels, first and foremost, we call our classic formula. Classic formula has been around for close to 15 years now and is basically the industry standard as how we define a wheel that is good to transition in and out of pendulum slides, when you throw down a check slide in a, before a corner in a race, if you're out free riding and you need a wheel that is smooth and controlled throughout the turn. Another interesting formula that was developed after Classic, our grip formula, is called Reflex. It's tough material. It wears for a super long time and it's like a pit bull when it comes to traction. Now the bad side of Reflex, if you will, is that it doesn't slide smoothly. Some racers learn to manhandle reflex through a corner. They're able to stop faster, they're able to slow down sooner, and then once they're into the turn, they're able to hook up and really let that urethane shine, let the traction and control while railing a corner come through. So it can really be an asset if you know how to use it. So over here, our grip formula is reflex. And this is gonna be the foundation now for all the wheels that we're gonna start populating the board with. I'm going to start with this corner down here with drift shapes. One thing that makes a wheel a drift wheel design wise is to make it side set. If you put the bearings all the way to the inside edge of a wheel, the wheel doesn't have a chance to put an inner lip that can catch and create resistance when you're turning in there. So consequently side set wheels are uh, have the least amount of traction. Now you can get bigger wheels and a bigger contact patch, but that's never going to overcome the inherent drifty nature of a side set wheel. One of the early wheels that we did that was a side set wheel with a fairly decent contact patch is the 70mm flashback. It's an incredible all around wheel. So you can uh, get a fair amount of traction when cornering. We used to race on these wheels quite a bit, but they really feel good coming in and out of slides. So it's a great free ride wheel, a great campus cruiser wheel, but nonetheless, it's a drift wheel. Other um, wheels that were basically derived from the side set idea was at first the BERT, a very small 60 millimeter wheel, and the companion to BERTs, well, those are Ernie's. This is a 65 millimeter wheel. And what you see with this wheel is a very radius, a very round corner on that. That's also going to predispose this wheel into sliding. Now all of these wheels have relatively small contact patches with the BERTs having the smallest contact patch. That's the running surface of the wheel. It's basically the area that I'm putting here between my fingernails. And the smaller the contact patch, the more likely that this wheel is going to slide. Another element of the design of a wheel that's good for uh, drifting is to have thick lips or less flexible lips than normal. This wheel has a very, very hard flexible uh, lip on it. These are thick, the flashback as well. They're not like the very thin-lipped flexible wheels that are really gonna be like a suction cup and lay down a, um, a big wide contact patch on the road. Uh, so by having uh, wheels with usually uh, large cores and or thick lips, small contact patches, and either a radius or a chamfer on the edge, along with these uh, uh, drifty urethanes, you're gonna find some incredibly smooth uh, and great performing wheels for drifting. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these here and introduce a couple other wheels to the scene that you may also be familiar with, which include our free ride wheel. Free ride wheels have many of the same characteristics that I just spoke of. Radius edges, medium sized core, moderate contact patch, a little chamfer in here, and an offset bearing seat. So the 66 millimeter wheel, also a great wheel that transitions beautifully into and out of slides. Up from that, we have a 72 millimeter uh, free ride wheel. It's one of the wheels that literally revolutionized the free riding industry by giving you these 
incredible radiuses, narrowish contact patch, medium sized core, enough urethane to last a long time, but a fantastic overall free riding uh, wheel. It's big brother, the 77 millimeter free ride wheel, more of the same, lasts longer, but still excellent qualities going in and out. Now, more recently than that, a lot of wheels made popular are the, uh, the Pink Series Freeride Wheel. It's 72 millimeter wheel. Then an 81A formula is fantastic for that. There's nothing quite like 81A classic formula when you want to drift. So there's that wheel. Based on the similar thing, we have an even smaller contact patch with the polka dots from the Pink Series, 81A classic. Fantastic, nimble little wheel, especially good for top mount boards because you're not going to get wheel bite with such a small wheel. And uh, the amber thane has been so popular just because of the beautiful thane lines that, that uh, are left out on the ground. This is a 72 millimeter offset free ride wheel. It's 81A classic urethane, as were these other amber wheels. Uh, some other notable mentions are the smallest of our soft wheels in the Sublime series. This is a Sublime softball uh, center set free ride uh, wheel. More of the same, medium sized core, radius edges. This wheel is kind of a crossover between a race wheel and a drift wheel, but probably not your best wheel for the long slides that a lot of the free riders are doing now. Early wheels in our series, no schools, big uh, radiuses on the corner, center set, bigger than normal contact patches, which make the, the uh, favorite for people who want to slide but with a little bit uh, uh, more traction. One of the first wheels that we designed for racing, uh, street luges and downhill boards for transitioning in and out of slides. We make a 76, 83, uh, 90, and 97 millimeter flywheel in the classic formula. So you have to put these here too. And as you can see, it's getting to be a kind of a crowded bit of real estate here in the drift, drift corner of our matrix. Now on the opposite end of the spectrum, we're going to just go ahead and go across the corner here into Tractionville. Nothing sticks like Reflex. It's an incredible formula, our most popular durometer being Lime. It's an 80A, and when you take a wheel like the uh, zigzag here, this is a 66 zigzag, you'll notice that this wheel has very sharp edges on the corners. So I call these kind of a square lipped wheel. It's a flexible square lipped wheel, and these also are offset, meaning that they have a bearing seat that goes in. This inner lip does not want to slide smoothly or sled. It's the opposite of a radius or of a ski. It's that, it's that corner that wants to dig in. This is the smallest of the reflex formula uh, zigzags, but it's a great tight slalom wheel or hard carving wheel uh, when you want a smaller diameter. I'm going to go ahead and put that up here and uh, have you uh, take a look at the 70 millimeter zigzag. Uh, just more of the same, wider contact patch flexible square edges, reflex formula, a great all-around traction base wheel, hard carving wheel. In the slalom area, it might be a better hybrid slalom wheel or a loose, tight slalom wheel. But one of the wheels, traction-wise, that really helped put us on the map was the Big Zig, particularly the Lime Big Zig. We had people like Scoot Smith winning the World Championship and Mary Hill back-to-back. -back. When you need that balls-to-the-wall kind of traction, a wheel like the Big Zig is the way to go. Now, after a certain width, what happens is the footprint of your board, the track width, is going to get too big if you just keep getting the wheel wider and wider and wider to the outside, to the point where you can either kick your wheel or get wheel bite. So what happens is you start to develop a wheel and grow the contact pad by making it center set, growing the inside of the wheel. This printed side is typically the outside of the wheel. But the Centrax is kind of like a big zig with an extended inner lip, but nonetheless you have hard edges, flexible lips huge contact patches and a reflex formula and you've got a suction cup of a wheel. And then the big kahuna, the 83 millimeter Centrax. This wheel is 78 millimeters wide, but a flexible lipped wheel with a huge contact patch, square edges, small core. This wheel is able to deform and put all of this urethane down on the ground during a corner. It is one of the Lord God kings of traction. So what we put together so far is really kind of the opposite corners, the opposite ends of the spectrum. Drift, drift, and traction, traction. There's some interesting things that happen in between. Here's a zigzag, this is a big zig, and this is a centrax. But we have these now in the classic urethane formula, which is again, classic is predisposed to drifting more smoothly. You give up a little bit in traction, but you may want that ability to transition in and out of corners better. So. These actually make really good wheels for a race course where you have to pre-drift. For somebody who wants to try to balance his time, you know, making sure he can make the turns or having the requisite 
uh, traction, yet when he pitches this thing sideways, he's going to be able to smoothly go in and out of the slide. And lastly, we have this other category where, interestingly enough, there aren't very many things that really fill that space. This is when you have a drift shape of a wheel, but you put it in a traction formula. As it turns out, most people either want to go to one extreme to the other or balance the two in this corner. Because although this is a free ride wheel, when you put it in a reflex formula, it's still going to be a little bit more chattery than is tolerable for most people, quite frankly. But if you're doing parking garages, if you want to go to the bike path and be carving around, you want that extra traction. If you're not going to be busting out slides, you need a wheel with a certain significant diameter, 72 millimeters. It's got these radius edges for transitioning over things well and a fair amount of traction. So it actually becomes um, an interesting wheel, a really good wheel, but there's just not as many applications out there as some of the other more popular sports of free riding, sliding, sidewalk, surfing, uh, things like that. Alrighty, now technically speaking, that really isn't the only wheel that goes in that corner. Not everybody's cup of tea. Matter of fact, these are very specific specific wheels for very specific circumstances. This is the 107 millimeter electric flywheel. We call it the electric fly or electric flywheel because one of the applications for this uh, is really not racing, not meant for street or for pool riding, but actually for the big electric boards. It does have though the radius edges, a big chamfer on this side, relative to the size of the wheel, a small contact patch, but it's a big massive wheel made out of reflex formula. Technically goes into this category. Now, the kind of exciting part of what's next for ABEC 11 comes in the way of actually visiting a, uh, a wheel that we did many years ago but had never released to the public. This is an 83 millimeter MOMO. It's got MO contact patch, it's got MO urethane, momentum, it's just got MO, MO of everything. So that's why we call it a MOMO. So this is kind of a tweener wheel and this is a very interesting wheel for our racers and the guys who've really adopted the formula or the idea that I want to race quickly, I want to have traction with what I need, it, and I want to be able to set up and drift on something. This is going to drift better than that 83 millimeter Centrax, and it's kind of that tweener wheel. I'm going to put this one kind of on the line between a pure drift shape and between that you know traction shape, but very interesting wheels. As you can see, just by the number of wheels on the board, there's more than one way to skin a cat. One size does not fit all. And where some people say, well, you don't have to reinvent the wheel, in skateboarding, you really do. So for purposes of today's discussion, we wanted to keep it simple. As simple as drift, drift, grip, grip, and a couple other strange things in the corner. So the bottom line here is different strokes for different folks. One size doesn't fit all. We have a number of different offerings here. You can spend a lifetime trying all of the different wheels and all the different durometers and all the different sizes that we have. But you've got a good understanding now of what to be looking uh, for out there. Know thyself, know what it is that you're looking for. If you have any questions about what specific wheel for what type of skating you do, we're gonna give you an email at the end of this show. We're gonna help you out to find what you like and in future episodes, we're gonna get a lot more specific about each individual wheel, what it's designed for and what it's gonna do for you. This is Chris Chaput for Skate Gear. Be sure to tune in for our next episode and we'll see you down the road.